Um, so welcome everyone. This is the Fedora and CentOS Hyperscale and Cloud Meetup. And your host today is David Duncan. Uh, he is the current organizer of the Fedora Cloud Working Group and a member of the CentOS Hyperscale SIG. Um, he is also a partner solution architect at Amazon Web Services. Um, and if anyone would like to join the meetup, uh, please just ask to share and I'll approve you. And um, yeah, let's have a great time, everybody. Yeah, let's have a super time. So uh, thanks everybody for coming. And uh, just wanted to give, make this an opportunity for us to talk about uh, what it is that uh, is going on in the, in the, in the various SIGs. Um, and the very and working groups and to talk about uh, how you can participate if you want to participate or if you are participating to just have another opportunity for us to just hang out and say hello to each other and uh, and talk about what's going on I want to start with a hyperscale sig uh, I mean there's so many people who are here to talk about you know talk about what's going on there um, uh, we got Davida here to to talk to talk about it from the from the leadership perspective, and Neil, you've been doing so much great work around the kernel here lately. Um, it would be super fun to share some of that. So, uh, Davida, can you just tell us a little bit about what the what the vision of the hyperscale uh, SIG is? Mm -hmm. Sure. So the general idea behind hyperscale is to have a place that people and companies can use to try and do work that benefits large-scale environments in the open. There's lots of companies that use Fedora and CentOS in large-scale environments, and all of these companies tend to like kind of reinvent the same stuff in-house in a way that rarely gets out of this wall garden. So the idea is to try to move a lot of this work out in the open so that people can contribute and benefit, because there's no point in everybody reinventing the same stuff all the time, and also trying to advance the state of the art make it easy to have a space for people to experiment, to try with new technologies, uh, see if things can work out, um, and then generally improve things there. Yeah, I think that's great. I think it, it's, uh, it's been really beneficial to have a, a lot of the enablement that uh, would normally go on behind closed doors happening out in the open and in a way that everyone could take, take, um, uh, take advantage of. Uh, Michelle's saying it's time to switch to Chrome. <laughs> so it is. I, I saw Michael's request show up for moderation, and I clicked on it to approve, but I, I, I guess it didn't sync up with his browser or something, so hopefully we'll get this Yeah, fixed there's up. some. Can you actually see my camera? Because Michelle was. Yeah, you, you. Yeah, I can see you. I can okay, see you. You look so fine. It's on his okay, side. Something is wrong then. Yeah, I, I don't like. I saw the request from Michael come in, and I approved it. Uh, but yeah. then I guess it didn't go back to his browser. So, yeah, this no. thing works way better if you use Chrome than Firefox, at least for me. Yeah. So, um, so then I think the next thing I would I want to talk about is uh, is what do we what's you know where where are we in turn? Neil, you might be able to say some some things about this. Like what's what. What, where are we in terms of vision? What are some of the things that you, you're looking at in the hyperscale that are super exciting to you? Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, for those who don't know, since David just kind of threw me into the, into the, into I the did. water here. I did, I did throw you into the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a member of the hyperscale SIG as well as Fedora Cloud Working Group and a whole bunch of other things here and there. But like, um, a big part of what I'm doing in hyperscale is actually around um, enabling easy usage of like the most loud, loud. I, something's I, make yeah, something's making yeah, some noise in there, Michelle. Yeah, oh, you got it. Um, okay. All right. So what I'm what I'm focused on in hyperscale is trying to enable easy consumption of the technologies that we're we are providing and the stuff that we're playing with and we're working with um, where it would ordinarily be very difficult for someone to set it up themselves. So like so my first focus has been on the hyperscale workstation, which, you know, there was a bit of a, a buzz around that last year when the hyperscale SIG spun up. And then like midway through the year, I started launching the experimental workstations based on CentOS stream eight. The idea around that was some of the stuff that we're doing like RPM cow, some of the ButterFS uh, fancy features, 
um, things like that. Um, they're a little hard for people to set up manually from like a plain vanilla CentOS system and then go to that. So like I wanted to bring in those, those defaults from Fedora and extend them with some of the stuff that we're working on so people can see how the complete picture looks from the beginning. Because like I can tell you that um, Meta is almost certainly doing, you know, provisioning from the beginning with this setup from the, from the get-go. But, you know, everyone on the public side doesn't have access to their images. So like, you know, I want to basically build open infrastructure for people to consume this content. And as part of making these images, like the hyperscale workstation, eventually the hyperscale cloud image that I'm going to have, um, these images are going to be designed um, with all of the information on how to produce them to be accessible to everyone so they can reproduce it themselves, they can tweak, tweak it for their own needs, they can adapt it for their own circumstances. Like, so for example, um, right now for our, our, our installer presets, like we do... Uh, but Butterfest subvolumes for root and and home, and eventually I'm going to add var once you know the requisite tweaks are are done, and we can like make that kind of work. But maybe somebody wants to have root the root user as a subvolume, or maybe they want to relocate, you know, something else, or they want to add another setting or or whatever. Right? The the fact that all of the infrastructure and all the tooling and all of the instructions, the total blueprint of how to produce mm -hmm. all this stuff is given to you. You can take that stuff and tweak it for your own needs and be able to adapt it for your use case. So like, for example, I'm thinking of, um, you know, I was recently involved in a mailing list about um, VFX and CG and animation, all that stuff. And they're, they're increasing on the Linux front, but like their ability to like customize, standardize and deploy at scale is super limited because they don't have a blueprint for doing this. And so what right. I'd like to do is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they used to they so the the re, the the result of you know in previous years with CentOS was that they would just leverage a very stable environment to say okay this is not going to change for a long time but then they would they would say okay take a kernel and then yeah. force that you know force that to work for an, an or you know a a much longer amount of time than than we would normally want right that would right that would, that would kind of kind of be a, a, a security compromise or, or create a complication that made it very difficult right. for us to, yeah. Yeah, right. that's and, the and thing. Yeah, and like a big part of the blueprint here is I'm making this, I'm actually designing this in a way that like, so if those studios say they can't run CentOS, they need to run RHEL or they need to run um, Fedora or whatever, right? Like they, they're, they're running for a very specific use case or because they have support arrangements or whatever. Like, say, they need to run RHEL, but they want to use a lot of the stuff that we're doing. Well, something, these these blueprints can be trivially reconfigured to work with, say, RHEL or whatever. Um, and, you know, I've been making overtures to other SIGs in the CentOS, in the CentOS community, like the KMOD SIG. Um, if, somebody, if any of you are on Twitter and following me on Twitter, you may have seen me tweet out a picture last night of my desktop running vanilla CentOS 9 with... ButterFS enabled and working. And nice. the reason for that is um, I want to give people the opportunity to use whatever supportable configuration they need and be able to leverage all the cool stuff we're doing, basically to be able to generate what they need, have the blueprints. Because in a lot of places, you know, a lot of pla places like uh, Datto and, and Facebook and Twitter and all these other places, they take for granted that they have the, the expertise to do, and Amazon and AWS, yeah. right? They take for granted the, ex, the fact that they have the expertise to pull off all these custom things, to be able to make these decisions about how to assemble these images, how to make customizations, how to layer on their own stuff, how to be like, that stuff is not simple for most people. And, and giving people blueprints and simple ways to take advantage of that for the workstation, for the cloud, for even bare metal servers eventually, if I could ever figure out how we're going to do that, that's great. And that's what I'm focused on. Yeah, I think that's fabulous. I mean, so, I mean, and it brings up something that I think is really great, which is that, that compliment to the, to the KMOD SIG, right? That I think, I think that is, a, that is a huge, uh, huge complimentary experience is to have the, the kernel modules. What's the, What's the, do we have any goals around continuous integration um, and, and testing for the, for the 
for the, the all those packages and the associated kernel? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Davida has some more details about some yeah. of the specifics. Um, from a general perspective, I'll say we eventually want to get to a point where all the blueprints I'm working on, all the configuration work I'm doing on, if it can't be upstreamed into CentOS itself, like we've done a lot of work with Pipewire, Wire Plumber, um, stuff with Nginx. Like uh, if you read the latest quarterly report, you'll see that there's a yeah. whole bunch of stuff between workstation and server stuff that I did. If they can't be integrated there and we've got to hold it on our end, we want to make sure we can continually test it, continuously rebase it, complete, continuously upgrade it. Um, but Davida has some specifics that he could probably um, talk about because he knows yeah, that so for the, more. For the hyperscale content specifically, we're trying to leverage the CentOS CI as much as possible. Uh, and the CentOS CI provides us, among other things, an OpenShift environment that we can use to spin up basically arbitrary containers. So right now, we're using this for doing daily builds of systemd based off using our packaging, but based off the systemd git master. And what this gives us is that whenever something breaks, uh, because there was a change in upstream system D in the new release, we get we know this way ahead of the new release and we can adjust our packaging as needed. Um, we want to extend this to other packages as well that we have. Uh, we we started rigging up a similar setup for the kernel, but we haven't quite wired it yet. The other thing I would really like to have at some point is a way to deploy what we build over our VMs in a CI environment so that we can boot a VM with our kernel, with our system being get some signal on what works and what doesn't. So for example, for systemd, one thing we maintain is a set of IC Linux uh, rules to make mm -hmm. sure that uh, our, the recent systemd backward we have works as well as it should on a CentOS 9 system with SC Linux enabled. Um, I've wrote a bunch of those. I don't actually run SC Linux. I know very little about SC Linux. <laughs> um, so, it would be real nice to get automated input whenever those break so we can fix them. Because otherwise, we're just going to find out our release time, and then I'll have to scramble and I grab Neil for help, because he's the only one that actually knows how SDNOS works here, and, <laughs> and try to put this together. So there's a few one things day, like that. Yes, one, day, Davida, you will, one day, Davida, you will actually gain the knowledge, too. I, uh, you can't sure. lie to me. I saw you figuring it out. <laughs> Eventually. Um, but yeah, so there's there's definitely things there. The other thing I think would be really nice to have is because in the SIG, we have a number of packages that can track ahead of what's shipped in CentOS. Um, those are relatively easy to maintain because whenever there's a date in CentOS, our version is always going to be ahead. But there are some that don't necessarily track ahead. They will be the same package that's in CentOS, but with modifications applied on top or the package tracking closed. Like, for example, we have... Um, that part of the packaging stack uh, that we used to test features like uh, the RPM DNF copy and write enablement work. And whenever a DNF or RPM is updated in CentOS, we don't have a good way right now to know that we have to also update our backport. So one thing I would like to have is some automation to figure out this package was updated within CentOS, either file a ticket for us or ideally try to do the release automatically, kick up a build and get signal from it. Oh um, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, we have tickets for all of these things on our issue tracker, if anybody's interested in working on them. I actually spent some time yesterday cleaning with that. I noticed. I saw I saw quite a few things coming across in the in in the email. Uh, that was great. Yeah. So um yeah, I think that's just that's super exciting. I was listening to uh, Steph Walter talk about uh, the error budgeting in his talk uh, earlier and um and it seemed like that was a this is a a place where we could really truly benefit from that. So yeah, Neil, I'm I'm super excited about uh, about metal, right? Having full metal uh, support, but uh, obviously, yeah. Oh. yeah. The the challenge here, honestly, is um, in the CentOS infrastructure and tooling that exists today. We don't actually have a way to produce an install DVD, like at all. Um, the install DVD requires custom tooling, uh, a tool um, in folks in the Fedora and and Rel community and the Red Hat ecosystem would know of as Punji, which is the tool that actually like goes through and walks through the build system, collects all the stuff to push out, and makes the repos, but makes also the install images and makes and and, and composes all that stuff and pushes it out to the mirror network. Um, that tool is the only tool that can produce the install DVDs. You can't produce them any other way. And when you're working from CVS, which is the CentOS community build system, 
the repositories aren't produced with the necessary metadata for pun for a Punji run to work on it. So we cannot produce install DVDs um, as it currently is. I am thinking of trying to, I am experimenting. I'm experimenting with the idea of being able to create a net install ISO um, and, and seeing if I can make that work by perverting the use of the live ins live media creation tool. <laughs> um, because uh, it is actually very hard to produce this media when I don't know how they're made. So, so I, I want to, I want to add. So then now I want to, now I'm going to add something that's kind of mildly controversial. So, the, so the, but we don't have, um, uh, we don't have any way to do this uh, outside of Punji, but isn't OS build supposed to provide some of that ability? So the problem is, so it is supposed to, but I don't see any functionality built into it for it. Like I've looked at the code for it. What it can do is produce um, a file system tree and then create a simple installer that'll sync that file. Basically the equivalent of a live installer, except way dumber. Um, and that's not terribly helpful. Um, I want to be able to give people like, all right, there's a collection of packages in here. We've created the install DVD with the built-in repos and whatever. And, and then they can install like the traditional way with a kickstart and all that, all that jazz. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to leverage the same stuff I do to create live CDs to just create a new live environment that all it does is boot up Anaconda into net install mode. And if I can get that to work, then I, I, I basically am going to say, I'm going to throw my hands up and say, this is the best you get. Like, cause I can't, I can't do any better here. Um, and, and have a way for people to, basically do automated provisioning in the same way that they would do with official rel and centos media because you know that's i think the real gap we have right now for like certain types of consumers because um there isn't a really there isn't a great way to use cloud images to to install onto bare metal i i at least not uh, one that i know of <laughs> <clears throat> yeah yeah well <laughs> I, okay, there I, there is a couple, but like yeah. they're not packaged. They're not packaged in Fedora and in Apple yet. Although, if someone's interest, for example, I think um, there's a tool called Mass Metal as a Service, and I think one of its defining qualities is that it uses cloud in it to provision bare metal systems. Um, it, and it supports CentOS in the open source, open core version. Um, if someone were to package that in Fedora and Apple, um, we could actually put that as part of our hyperscale uh, roadmap. I, I yeah, hope for that. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Tomas, thanks for joining us. Hello. Yeah. Did you have a question or, or something you wanted to talk about? Uh, so, no. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just joining, trying to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> uh, well, yeah, just, just trying to talk a little bit about what's going on in the hyperscale world. And then I thought, you know, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, would love to um, uh, would love to talk a little bit about, uh, about cloud, too. I mean, so obviously, you know, all of this work ends up giving us virtual machines. Those virtual machines function in many different ways um, in the you know, in cloud, but also we have we have a couple of groups, you know, a couple of working groups for for that as well. We've got the CentOS Cloud Image Group, and um, and then we also have the Fedora Cloud Group. We don't have a, a Fedora Hyperscale group just yet, Neil, do we? <laughs> no, no, we don't yet. Um, I think Michelle and I, uh, or <clears throat> before the summer, Michelle and I will wind up creating a Fedora Hyperscale. I don't know what we're gonna do yet there, but yeah. I think it's gonna exist simply because we we already do as part of a lot of the CentOS hyperscale work. We do a ton of work in Fedora, and it might make sense to incorporate that into a SIG anyway for um, for organizational purposes and to just kind of clarify where some some things are going on. Because right now it's like kind of spread out everywhere, and and it's just kind of happening randomly. And it, bringing that together in, in CentOS was clearly good for us. It might also make sense for us to do that in Fedora too. Yeah, I think I think it very well very well could. But one of the things that I that I thought would be would be um, 
really helpful is being able to produce some uh, much more upstream versions of of the uh, um, of some of those some of those modules, right? So having having that as as a sort of a pre-release would be would be ideal, is, just to know that those you know where the problems and the bugs are in in the Fedora releases versus trying to determine what they are, you know, after we'd expect them to be stable, right? Or yeah. Uh I could easily see us maybe, I mean, as a starting point, um, the Fedora hyperscale could just be the analog of CentOS hyperscale that does everything against, for example, ELN and Rawhide. Um, like, uh, yeah. Because uh, one of the things I want to avoid in Fedora is I want to avoid us having more special variants that are just doing these things. I want the technology we're doing in Fedora to be uh, integrated into the distribution proper and shipped with everyone and getting the maximum amount of value for the community, it, it, so the, yeah. the focus would be a little different than what we do in CentOS. So yeah, and speaking I, of ELN, I think it'd be really interesting to try and do like a hyperscale version of ELN and see which parts of our stack still work on ELN and which parts stop working. Because I think that would be that's something I'm personally interested in because I want to use ELN within Facebook as a way to get like a preview of the future of what might be coming down mm. the pipe for CentOS, so we can plan ahead. Uh, but it's something that I think would be generally useful in terms of like, oh, we found out that this change that was applied in Fedora 38 or something is impacting our backports or our kernel work or our whatever. And then we can like either course correct on our side or we can provide feedback on the Fedora side. And I think everybody benefits from this. Yeah, you can just make Michelle run it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just on this server. <laughs> well, and also, right? Um, this at the end of last year, Amazon announced that Amazon Linux is based on Fedora now, right? So, yeah. uh, Fedora. Yeah. Uh, and while I'm, I'm, I'm hoping AWS will participate more and pull oh, more from Fedora yeah. Cloud into Amazon Linux. Like, cross my fingers here, because we did a lot of good stuff in Fedora Linux 35 that I want to see in Amazon Linux. <laughs> 2022 final, yeah. um, but it might actually make sense for as part of hyperscale Fedora hyperscale. We actually bring that those configurations in as well, and make sure that those things are actually like being validated. Well, so that brings me back to the to, to the concepts around the cloud the cloud SIGs and and so one I I want to state that I think that that as a cloud SIG as a working group we have a responsibility to um, uh, to the ELN guys to to create some images for them, and I, and I think that that's uh, that's something you know it's definitely on the radar. Uh, you know, looking at Fed image, we got to get rid of that. Um, love love Cyan and everybody who worked on it. You know, in the in the past, but um, but we 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 got to get rid of that. And hey Troy, great to see you here. Um, and and uh, just want to shout out for your support of. Carl George when he phoned a friend the other day on the <laughs> yeah that was great <laughs> on the stream that was fantastic <laughs> and um, uh, so so I think we have a big I, I think we have a uh, a big um, a big responsibility to ELN to get their images back you know up and cloudified and make them a, a, a much more important part of of that um, image space and. And uh, I also think that uh, we have this, um, we have a lot of work to be, you know, to be done around, around um, uh, making those, making images available and the modules available and getting a better test bed all just all the way around. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. I would really love to see ELN, um, be a, a, a larger focus. Yeah, Mohan, you got some great board games here. Uh, I just want to uh, say, uh, Neil, uh, uh, by the time I joined, you're talking about Punji and trying to uh, generate some images and stuff. <clears throat> I don't know what is it about. Uh, so if you want any help, uh, just let me know. I'm more than happy to help. Yeah, I will probably want to talk to you about install DVDs and net install ISOs. I think they're called boot ISOs, actually. Boot ISOs. Like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yep. I will want to talk to you about those because I want to be able to make those um, in, in, in CentOS. 
Sure. Maybe we can get him. Maybe we can get Mohan to come into on the stream. Oh, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I was just gonna say I might be able to interrupt for just a minute. We're approaching the last official minute for this session, so uh, you know, just wanted to thank David for uh, for hosting this uh, great meetup, and uh, yeah, thanks everybody for joining too. This is awesome discussion. Super. And uh, David, uh, who uh, do you know who did all the mass tables in Center Stream? That's who did all me. the what? Oh, okay. Nice. Center stream. I'm already yeah, yeah. in stream. <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been hitting the hammers all the time in CentOS stream. <laughs> oh yeah. No. So that's fantastic, and I know that uh, you know everybody who's doing this has got you know their at their day job. Um, so always super happy about everything that gets done. And Michelle, you you made a. Uh, a point that we should talk a little bit about the multi-lib. Um, I think that's that's an interesting topic. You want to you start us off? Yeah, like um, so this just came up recently that basically we built uh, in CBS. CBS mm -hmm. doesn't have, basically it only builds x 64 right? And basically if we want to ship a newer package in a hyperscale that uh, then something in CentOS, basically we lose multi-lib support. Anyone who installed that and needs a little bit libraries will be basically well. You cannot use this package. Yeah, we should be able to fix that because I think CBS actually can pull in the Koji build root from Stream, so that lets us uh, that lets us bypass that particular bit of ugliness if we if we try hard enough. It yeah. it does. <clears throat> but we'd it have to talk to Mohan yeah. and mm -hmm. and. Um, and Fabian to figure that out. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can add it to the list. Yeah, we've got a pile of things at this point. <laughs> I think we're out of time. I, think I, so too. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I saw there's another one starting in yeah. a few minutes, so we should probably leave yeah. them their own. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, Appreciate listen. leaving a little extra time. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, David. I was just going to say thanks to everyone for te for coming and participating. This has been super fun to just have a few minutes to talk about this uh, face to face and kind of on the record. So, um, uh, look forward to the next time and uh, maybe even doing this for for uh, well. I'll remind people that there's the Cent the CentOS hyperscale has a meetup, and so we get together and do this over over. Um, uh, a teleconference is uh, from from time yeah. to time. So come and join us. Yeah, we got a monthly thing, and we have a matrix room. Um, mm -hmm. Pound centos dash hyperscale colon fedora project dot org. Uh, we have weekly meetings in IRC. Although we will eventually move that to matrix once things are figured out. Um, monthly meetups on the video call. Go check the centos calendar. Yep. And uh, same for same yeah for fedora cloud and fedora sig. Yeah, thank, thanks, right. everybody. And right. next year, I would definitely recommend scheduling an hour for this discussion. <laughs> right on. <laughs> I think Tomas gave us what he had. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>